NASA supervolcano new hotspots and how NASA is helping the United States Geological Survey predict the next super eruption. Yellowstone volcano potential next eruption being predicted with the help of NASA technology. This is according to USGS scientists. Yellowstone caldera is labeled a supervolcano because of the ability to inflict the devastation on a worldwide scale. If another super eruption occurs, NASA satellite images taken by the Advanced Space Borne Thermal Emission and Reflection Radiometer, ASTER for short, A-S-T-E-R, are helping scientists identify these hotspots and any areas where magma could be rising in order to warn of future events, big or small. Since 2004, the Yellowstone National Park officials have been studying thermal features around this park, hoping to find any new areas and identify the supervolcano uh, sections that may be sensitive and coming to an eruption. Now we know that Yellowstone has over 60% of the world's geysers and over 10,000 hydrothermal areas. Not all of them have been discovered yet. The uh, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory was established in 2001 after a BBC documentary in late 2000 made everyone aware of how dangerous Yellowstone could be in case of an eruption another super eruption as it had in the past. That motivated the US government to open up the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory in 2001. So it's basically 19 years old. Greg Vaughn from the United States Geological Survey said in 2012, this is technology and data that could be applied to any geothermal and volcanic areas in the, in the world to monitor eruptions and maybe even predict volcanic activity. So taking data manually is difficult to do because Yellowstone is such a huge area. It's hard work, it's time consuming, and of course there are dangerous wild animals, for example bears. The researchers use these thermal images from space satellites monitoring about 10,000 geothermal features, as we said, in Yellowstone. Dr. Vaughn and his team take these images overnight to prevent picking up the heat reflectors from the rocks. So the images are taken at night, so they're not distorted by daytime heat. The night heat would show definitely that it's ground heat that is being emanated and they study them to identify any areas of concern. A super eruption at Yellowstone supervolcano has occurred three times in recent history, 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, 640,000 years ago, and they've led to some to suggest that another one is overdue. Now, these are not the only eruptions we had. We had one about 130,000 years ago, which was smaller, but major, 70,000 years ago, a major eruption, and another 80 eruptions, smaller ones, since then. So you can see that uh, it's not that uh, far-fetched to expect another one. Now, researchers worked for the USGS, working for them, stated that this theory could not be further from the truth. Their website reads, first of all, one cannot present recurrence intervals based on only two values because it would be statistically meaningless. But for those who insist less to the, the arithmetic, they say the three eruptions occurred 2.1 million, 1.3 million, and 0.64 million years ago. Two intervals are thus 0 0.8 and 0 0.66 million years, average of 0 0.373 million years. Again, the last eruption was 640 million years, thousand years ago, implying that we are still about 
90,000 years away from the time when we might consider calling Yellowstone overdue for another super eruption, a caldera forming eruption. And they go on to say, nevertheless, we cannot discount, discount the possibility of another such eruption occurring sometime in the future, given Yellowstone's volcanic history and the continued presence of magma beneath the Yellowstone caldera. It was revealed in the past how USGS researchers and the University of uh, Utah were left stunned when they discovered and produced images of a reservoir of hot, partly molten rock 12 to 28 miles underneath the surface of Yellowstone. The hot rock in the chamber is 4.4 times larger than the shallower long known tunnel that they previously mapped out. So they were shocked to find something which was a lot bigger, 4.4 times bigger. Xinhua Huang led the research in 2015 said, for the first time we have imaged the continuous volcanic plumbing system under Yellowstone. That includes the upper crustal magma chamber we have seen previously plus a lower crustal magma reservoir that has never been imaged before and that connects the upper chamber to the Yellowstone hotspot plume below. The hotspot plume, of course, connects to the Earth's core. So that's, this is what we have under Yellowstone is a hotspot, just as we have in Hawaii, for example. So the hot spot connects to the huge magma reservoir which collects, connects to the crustal magma, to the uh, upper magma chamber. The lower crustal magma reservoir connecting to the magma chamber above it. And this chamber is 4.4 times larger than the um, chamber above. Despite popular beliefs, the magma chambers are not full of molten rock ready to erupt, but it's mostly solid, sponge-like rock with pockets of magma. So it's not all molten, it's spongy and uh, smaller portions that are molten. Jamie Farrell, co-author on the paper, says that the discovery does not mean that Yellowstone is any closer to erupting. It said the magma chamber and reservoir are not getting any bigger than they have been. It's just that we can see them better when we're using these new techniques. Fan Chi Lin, another co-author, says it gives us a better understanding of the Yellowstone magmatic system. We can now use these new models to better estimate the potential seismic and volcanic hazards. This is by Callum Hora on Express UK. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.